So we've talked about what not to bring to Vietnam. That video, a lot of people consider kind of weird because the things it said not to bring, a lot of people thought were something you actually did bring. So with that, I want to do a video today and talk about what you should bring when you're coming to Southeast Asia or more specifically coming to Vietnam. If you missed that video on what not to pack to Vietnam, go to check it out. I'll leave a card above on what you should not be bringing with you when you travel here to Vietnam. Today, we're going to talk about seven things that you must bring when you go to Vietnam. This will probably be valid anywhere in Asia, however. So don't limit it to just Vietnam, but keep in mind, I've lived in Vietnam a long time, so I might be just a little biased on my list of what you should bring when you do come out here. And everything on this list, there is no order. I'm going one through seven. It doesn't mean something's more important than the other. I believe personally, all seven of these are very important. So don't take them as an order or priority, but just take them as things that you must pack when you do travel to Vietnam. Without further ado, guys, let's get into it. Seven things that you should bring when you come to Vietnam. Number seven, a laptop. This should be your central point of what you have with you. It should be small, but it should pack a punch. In my do not pack video, I talked about things that you shouldn't pack, which included desktop computers, like iMac minis, or even a big gaming laptop. So keep that in mind when you're selecting what computer to bring. Me personally, when I traveled to Vietnam, did my trip from the north to the south, south to the north, I always had my MacBook 11 with me. It was very small, it was compact, it ran modern Mac OS, and it fitted my AirBlade like nothing. I also suggest you get a bag for your buck. Get something strong. My MacBook Air was an i7 with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a terabyte of memory. So it was small, compact, and it was also something that just get everything done. So just have something small that does everything. My MacBook was able to do my work, my video editing, my entertainment, and even my alone time. Number two, software. Software is going to be one of the most important parts of this list. So it's going to be a little longer than the others, but I'm going to give you everything you need to have on your phone before you come to Vietnam. Some of these are going to be apps that I've used to get some of those big discounts that I've talked about in other videos, such as getting cheaper rent, getting items for half the cost, and being able to avoid going to places like markets. Number one, Maps Me. This one is very important to have. I think one of my biggest go-tos. It is Google Maps, but it's offline and it only uses your GPS. So download the app, download the maps where you're going to be going. Select Vietnam, download the Vietnam map, and you'll be able to access pretty much Google Maps with no Wi-Fi, no cellular SIM cards or anything. It goes 100% off your GPS. I recommend having Booking.com and having Hostel World. Both of these, I bounced off back and forth. Both trips, I would check and price compare through both of these. But these will give you the options of hostels, hotels, Airbnbs, or something just basic on the last minute. Versa This is a very important one to have if you plan on doing a lot of busing, sleeper busing, or anything. This is an app that you can put in English as well. It will allow you to see what the sleeper buses schedules are, pre-book anything. This is for sleeper buses. Keep this in mind. This is not for your local city, Saigon, or Hanoi bus system. But this is if you're going to be doing long traveling on buses. Lazada is like Amazon in the US or in UK or Europe. Just have it. Download it. If you need to order something, buy something, you can have it shipped to your house within a day or two. Or if you're staying at a hotel or something, have it shipped to you. I've had countless times where I've had to order random lighting or cameras or something like that at the last minute. So this one is rather interesting. We have Choto Banatsam. And the other one is not not 24H. Download all three of these and throw them in a folder on your phone. These are what I use for real estate. You're able to communicate with homeowners that are trying to buy and or sell or rent their homes. This is where I've got my deals. I will give you a little heads up though. 95% of the people you meet on this app to have to look at their properties to rent are going to be all Vietnamese, non-English speaking people. So have your girlfriend, your husband, your wife, your friend, a teacher assistant, whoever it is, have them help you with this process with these apps. But these apps are where I was able to get a three, four bedroom house to rent for $500 a month in a Vietnamese area. So download these three apps, put them together in a folder and just kind of put them away for that time that you need to get a house. The Grab app is very important to have. In Saigon, there's a lot of different motorbikes going on now. So I get that. But I don't know what the new ones are because they keep changing every few months. And as of right now, there's none. But download the Grab app. This will help you get your taxis. 
without having to worry about pricing or negotiating with anybody. Get the app, get your location, put it there where you want to go. The taxi comes to you. You pay the fee online. Everything is simple as could be. Currency Pros is exactly what it is. It just gives you currency exchange. There is a free version of it. I was looking at my phone. I bought the Pro version for some reason. I guess it took the ads off or something like that. But have Currency Pro just to make sure you're not getting cheated when you're exchanging your money around. Nemo ThinVit. This is a very important app for helping you improve your Vietnamese. If you are familiar with Aki, this is kind of Aki, but pretty done for you in a little better look altogether. You can download the app and get the first 100 flashcards for free. If you pay for it, you get like a thousand and one flashcards or something like that. I have always used Nemo for every country I visit. I actually have Nemo in Spanish, Vietnamese, Japanese, and French. So get Nemo. You can download the first hundred words for free. Try it out. It's worth the ten some dollars it costs for it. Zalo is a big one. If you've been to China or have heard the term WeChat, this is Vietnam's version of WeChat. This is very important. Download this now and be ready for it. You will need a Vietnamese number to register so you can get on there and use it. This is the biggest communication tool used in Vietnam. This is bigger than Viber. This is bigger than Facebook. This is bigger than Instagram. You can also pay your bills using this. You can connect with people around you. You could use it to buy stuff. You could use it to buy your motorbike. You could use it to pay for your insurance. You could use it to pay for your driver's license and your government taxes. You could literally use it for everything. So download Zalo. So this next one is for American people. This is called Talkaphone. Download this one if you're going to Asia or Vietnam and you're American. What this allows you to do is have an American phone number. Use it on your phone on a Wi-Fi network. This is how I dealt with my real estate back in America. This is how I dealt with my bills and all my finances and talking to my family and everything in America. The cool thing about it is it'll give you a free phone number local. Sometimes the number does change randomly because, again, it's free. But it allows you to call like you are already in America. It uses your Wi-Fi or your cell data, whatever you prefer to use. But PayPal is one to have if you have a bank account back home. If you're in Europe, if you're in South Africa, if you're in America, PayPal is very important to have just so you're able to kind of back and forth and transfer your money between your country and Vietnam. So download PayPal and already have it established with your hometown checking and banking account. Using PayPal Vietnam is kind of borderline, though. They've restricted it a few times and they've removed this restriction on it. Understand a problem in Vietnam is the government doesn't want you exporting money. And PayPal is a way to do it. It's a little pricier than the other mechanisms, but it is a way to do it. But download it and have it already connected to your bank account back home. So these next two are going to sound kind of weird. Tinder and Tandem. These are both, you're going to start thinking, okay, these are dating. David is trying to get me hooked up with Vietnamese girls and wives. Tinder is not used like it's used in the States or in Europe, where it's kind of like a booty call or finding a relationship. Tinder is used a lot of the time just to communicate, find English partners and whatnot. I've personally used Tinder and I've used Tandem probably in the three or four years like the first three or four years living in Vietnam, where I would just find new people to hang out with. This is where I've made a lot of good relationships. I met a lot of good people. I got invited to this string of weddings because of somebody I met on Tinder, where they introduced me to a DJ there. And she took me, she, well, she invited me to like seven or eight different weddings within like a two month period. Download Tinder, download Tandem to find new people in the area where you're going. But don't expect to be able to use Tinder in Vietnam as like a booty call thing. Yes, there's a lot of like, prostitution and stuff on there but majority of it is just people trying to find somebody to practice english with which is an awesome way to build a new relationship this next one deals heavy with just kind of reducing the physical stuff you have have icloud or if you have android i believe android has a cloud version for app for you apple users it's ten dollars a month for a terabyte of data of storage data that you can use online this was a lifesaver when i was doing my travels I was able to record everything on my iPhone or my GoPros and upload it to the cloud, see it immediately on my MacBook. And when I fi finished my trip or when we took our two or three day breaks during the trip, I was able to download, edit videos and upload them without having to worry about all the physical hard drives. I went through about 800 gigabytes of video storage in like a month and a half of traveling. And this included me deleting stuff after I processed it. So have this and have it ready. It's only about $10 a month. I don't know what Android is, but it doesn't cost much. And it's a lot easier and cheaper to deal with digital data. And also if the police stop you or something like that, they might want to see what's on your SSD drives and stuff like that. With this, you don't have this problem at all. 
This last one is kind of a bonus for people that have iPhones. It's called Offline Music Player. This is really cool because it allows you to play music without being on Wi-Fi or using cellular data. But the cool part about it is it allows you to import music onto your iPhone without using iTunes. So this should do it for the software. I know it's a big list. And this is a very long part of the video. But these are things that I've always had traveling around Asia. It's not only Vietnam. But they've all served a very heavy purpose and I've always been back. Feel free to leave a comment below if there's something that you think I forgot or that should be added to this list. Number four, have an iPad or Kindle. This is very important. I read between 12 to 24 books a year. So this was a big one for me. Me personally, I had an iPad Mini 4. It has about 64 gigs of storage. And it's just a bunch of books that allow me to read. This is a big lifesaver. It'll save you a ton of weight in regards to actually having to lug around books. Personally, though, I never used the iPad for any other software, any other thing. It was literally just an ebook reader for me. So I don't have any suggestions for using this iPad for anything past just using it for ebooks. Number five, a passport and credit card holder. I've never personally had one of these, but I've seen this save a lot of people stress and a lot of problems while they're traveling abroad. Personally, I've never carried my passports or my credit cards around with me. I know I'm a rebel. Police are asking for IDs. I don't have anything. I get it. But I just never carried them around, so this was never a problem for me. These are very good to have so people can't yank your passport. Losing your passport is a pain. And for example, when I was living in Hanoi, I was staying at Gecko Hotel. Got called out right there. And they somebody ripped out the visa of my passport. So what happens, I ended up, because the Hanoi embassy was closed for like a week for some reason, I had to fly down to Saigon, get a new passport, which ended up taking like three or four days. And then when I went to go get my visa, I just quit my job and I was just moving to the north. So I was in this like one month transition period. My visa was an exiting business visa, meaning I couldn't even get a new visa. So I had to end up getting my passport, going to Cambodia, updating on a tourist visa, then flying back to Hanoi, going to Lycho to get another one. So don't lose your passport is what I'm trying to tell you. Pack neutral clothing. I talked about this one a lot in the last video, things not to pack. Don't pack clothes. And I still don't get this one to this day. The secret to packing clothes is just pack neutral stuff. Don't pack things for the summer. Don't pack things for winter. Just pack stuff that you would just wear in a normal day weather. Also, this is a big thing I saw a lot with a lot of South Africans and Europeans when I was living in Vietnam. Don't pack for layovers. If you know you're going to be stuck in Japan or Canada or somewhere else for like 5 or 6, 10, 12 hours, don't pack clothes for that area. Even if they say it's going to be a snowstorm and stuff like that, just have like a warm shirt or something. You're probably not going to be leaving the airport if that's the case anyways. So you're just taking up space for something you'll never use. And to be honest, within two or three days of living in Vietnam, you're going to start finding shops where you can buy clothes. And I mean, honestly, when I was living there, within a few hours, I started seeing clothing spots on the road where you could buy jeans, where you could buy shorts, where you could buy sandals. So there's no need to pack a lot of stuff if you're going to Vietnam because you're able to buy it all probably for like 80% of the cost and you'll be able to buy it almost immediately as soon as you get there. Me personally, when I traveled to Vietnam both times, when I went there for short term and then when I went there to live long term, I was wearing 75% of the clothes that I brought with me and then 25% I had it in my bag itself. So don't worry about having a lot of stuff. You will be able to buy it in Vietnam and a lot cheaper. Number seven, having an emergency credit card. An emergency credit card is a must when you travel abroad. Make sure when you get your credit card, you call the company and let them know you are traveling abroad. Vietnam is a red flag country. I don't mean a pun in that, but Vietnam is known for a lot of fraud. So you need to know your, let your credit card company know that you're going to be in Vietnam. So when you use it, it doesn't get declined. Also, I would look into having travel insurance. A lot of credit card companies like American Express, for example, offer these kind of travel insurances. But while we're speaking about American Express, I have a big piece of advice I hope you guys get before you leave. Do not bring American Express. Do not bring a Discover card. Do not bring a Diners Club. I don't know about South Africa or Europe or the UK if you guys have your own kind of like versions of American Express or whatnot. But don't bring those cards. They are not really accepted in Asia. My problem was I actually had to use my credit card at one point. And what I brought was my American Express blue card. Nobody accepts it really in Saigon except a very select a few, but they're westernized companies. So don't bring these types. Just bring a MasterCard or a Visa card. And to be honest, if you can make it a Visa card, go for it. One thing I also learned going around Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam is MasterCard isn't accepted as much as we would think it would be. Visa was the card that was always somewhere. If they accepted a credit card, whatever it might be, 
be it a store or a restaurant or something like that, they always 100% of the time accepted Visa. 80% of the time they accepted MasterCard. 5% of the time would be the American Express discovers and everything else. So have an emergency credit card. Use it for your normal purchases. Don't use your debit card. The way I did it to protect myself from fraud was I used everything on my credit card charge. And then from my PayPal bank account, I sent my payment to the credit card. So I was always protected. Either way, I can't stress this one enough. Have an emergency credit card only for emergencies. And make sure it's not about to expire. Well, that should do with the things that you should bring to Southeast Asia, Vietnam when you come here to travel. What do you think about the list? Do you agree with it? Do you disagree with it? Or do you think there's something else that you should be bringing that be added to the list? Let me know in the comments below. But till then, guys, this is it for today's video. So I hope you enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe button. Smash that like button. Hope it's not a great deal. Until then, guys, I will see you again. Who the fuck are you talking to? Vietnamese. Don't uh... <laughs>